car we have here today is a defining moment in Jaguar's history. Not only is it their first all-electric vehicle designed from the ground up, but it is probably, next to the E-Type, one of the most beautiful designs that they've come up with. Welcome everybody to the Jaguar I-Pace. Grace, space and pace, three words that Jaguar used to define its cars back in the 1950s and 60s. You know, it's got me thinking of late, I don't think there is another car manufacturer that has such a back catalogue of beautiful designs in its history that came from an internal source. Think back, the XK120 was a car that made a Lamborghini Maiura look awkward. Then we had the C-Types, the D-Types, the XKSS, and that's before we got on to, of course, the seminal E-Type, a car that Enzo Ferrari himself described as the most beautiful car in the world. Even their four-door saloon cars had an aesthetic quality in them that would make others blush. The bank robber's car of choice, the Mark II, was the honour blackman to the Mercedes Pontons, Marlena Dietrich. The Series 3 XJ6, was still hailed as being best in class, even 20 years after it went out of production. Jaguar were without doubt one of the car companies to be forward thinking. But then the 1970s happened and history wasn't particularly nice to the big cat from Coventry. It was amalgamated into British Motor Corporation, which became British Leyland. Build quality took a dive and of course there was the workshop industrial actions things weren't looking good. Fast forward into the 1980s and step forward Sir John Egan and privatisation and once again Jaguar were pulled from the brink. But it was going to take a lot of investment if the future was to look British Racing Green again and in 1990 that came in the shape of a very large chequebook from Ford Motor Company. But whilst Jaguar's chassis and engine engineers were very forward thinking their design seemed to be looking backwards, with retro becoming the byword for design. Then there was the affront of the X-Type. OK, it was based on Ford's fabulous Mondeo, but it was styled to look like an old gentleman's club. Not exactly something that the young thrusting executives are going to be lured out of their BMW 3 Series for. Design director Ian Callum came on board and things changed. It's hard to believe actually that just eight years separate the car that we've got here today from that X-Type going out of production. And the I-Pace was not only Jaguar's first all-electric car, but just its second SUV after the F-Pace. It was a bold move by Jaguar, as only Tesla had shown the world a fully electric 4x4 up till now. And we certainly weren't expecting Jaguar to be quite so far ahead of the game, especially as its partner of Land Rover, the defining SUV brand. It comes in one powertrain variant, but with trim level hierarchy, with this one we're in, the being the range topping HSE. Whilst we've had more new models from Jaguar since the I-Pace, they've been conventional internal combustion engine cars. But we are told that the cream of Jaguar's crop, the XJ Saloon, will return as a full EV in the not too distant future. The Jaguar I-Pace will be celebrating its second birthday this year. But in the face of much newer German competition with the Audi e-tron and the Mercedes EQC 400, we wanted to know if it was still fresh enough to give those competitors a bloody good thrashing or whether it was well outpaced. Design-wise, spoiler alert, literally, it is Victory Jaguar. I think this has to be one of the best looking car designs available today. It is so fresh and unconventional in certain parts that it really stands out from the crowd. I mean, look at this curving belt line, for instance, that's much more model runway than school run. Jaguar call it an SUV, but I, I keep thinking of it almost like a just a big sports hatch. It sits a little bit lower than the other two cars, the Mercedes and the Audi, but on these big 22-inch wheels, it has such presence, it really, really stands out from the crowd. 
had this car a week now and I keep finding really interesting little de details in its design, such as this sort of chiselled section in the sill um, echoed front and back. But then that's also then reflected in the design of the rear spoiler and the rear lights as well. Really, really clever little design touch that shows a huge amount of thought has gone into this car. And then there's this big square jawed grille, very reminiscent of the Broadspeed XJs. And then the whole car, this particular one, sits on 22 inch wheels, which then seem to shrink the bodywork over it. And along with these lovely cowled headlamps and the curving of the front um, wheel arches give it almost like a cat-like quality where it's ready to pounce on its rather staid and drab Germanic prey. Whilst the I-Pace is a full five-seat car, it does lose it out on a little bit of space to the Audi and the Mercedes. And this rather large intrusion of design of the rear wheel arch does limit your entry and exit from the car. That being said, I've got plenty of um, foot room and knee room and headroom, even with this optional panoramic glass roof. The boot is large enough for most, but it is more long than it is tall. The floor is flat and the rear seats fold too. And as the batteries and motors are underneath the car, you do have a small front boot, which is perfect size for the charging cables, keeping them within easy reach if you need them and meaning you don't have to unload your luggage from the rear if you had kept them underneath the rear floor. Thankfully, the Jaguar I-Pace has an interior that is worthy of its design of the exterior. It is a big radical departure for Jaguar. No longer do we have big, buttoned leather seats, walnut veneer and smelling like stale old cigars and 20 year old malt of a Mayfair gentleman's club, but we've got nice use of materials and this lovely rubber texture here and the carbon fiber and the aluminium. Like the Audi, it uses three separate screens. It's instrument binnacle, the infotainment here, and now a climate control um, screen here as well. Um, it does have physical buttons as well, which is nice. These rotary controls are particularly nice. And although they could be slightly better quality material, they are, they feel, they've got a nice feel to them and almost like a, a rotating bezel of a diver's watch, which is quite nice. The only thing I will say is that a couple of times I've had to resort to actually reading the manual to find out how things actually work. And as a man, like asking for directions, we don't want to be doing that. The only thing, other thing I would say as well is you do get a little bit of glare off this screen and there has been a couple of quality glitches. The reversing camera has probably worked three times out of five. Now, you might think that's a little bit of a first world problem, but on a frosty morning like we've got these days in February, with no rear wiper, you are relying on the camera if you're reversing out of your driveway as the rear screen defrosts. And with it not working, you're kind of taking a bit of a gamble. And it tends to be something that we've noted a lot of with Jaguar, with the infotainment systems, that there has been little quality glitches. Other than that, we've got some nice materials being used in here, as I said. This particular test car's got this suede cloth um, inner, inner with these sort of like the cloth and outside. And I, I, I sort of liked it at first, but I have to be honest with you, as time's gone on, I've kind of gone off it. I'd love to have seen them use something slightly different. Maybe like a nice old kind of tweed like they did in the base model XJ40s in the 80s, but with a kind of modern twist or like a nice Prince of Wales check cloth or something. As it is, this does just remind me of a little bit of a cheap sofa from Ikea. I'd probably go for leather. Jag, you see that the I-Pace has a range of 292 miles and that's probably looking more like realistically 250 given weather conditions and temperature. And I have to say, in the week I've had the car, it certainly appears to be the case. It's certainly more efficient than the Audi e-tron that we had, which was eating away about three miles for every mile covered. That said, motorways are never going to be the electric car's friend. You're constantly using power. There's no brake regeneration. The car has a 90 kilowatt hour battery, um, and you should be looking at um, ch putting a, from a 100 kilowatt charger putting in round about 80% in our usual 35 to 40 minutes. Now Jaguar class the I-Pace as an SUV, but it really doesn't feel like it on the road. I have to say, of the three cars that we've driven recently, the Mercedes, the Audi and the Jaguar, the Jaguar is by far leagues ahead in terms of its dynamic ability. It just seems to turn in well, the steering's got a nice feel to it. <sighs> It just doesn't feel like an SUV. I keep coming back to that. It's like a real, I'll tell you what it feels like, and it's gonna sound a little bit odd. What it feels like 
is an old Subaru Impreza Turbo. It just gives you confidence. It's got a lot of grip. It's got a lot of feel to it. There's great dynamics from the chassis. And the ride comfort's good as well. I mean, this car's on the 22 inch wheels, as we say, and obviously they do have a little bit of a bearing on it, but it's not horrific. I had two colleagues in the car the other day who remarked actually how comfortable and quiet the car actually was. And by God, it's fast. I mean, it's got 400 PS, so not to 60 in 4.5 seconds. Now, I know that's not Tesla fast, but it's plenty for me. It also develops 696 Newton meters of torque. So again, an instant torque buzz that you get from the car. Um, you can raise the suspension as well. There's different modes uh, down here where there's dynamic comfort and, and obviously you can raise the suspension up. It's air suspension. You can raise that up if you want to test out Jaguar's off-road pretensions. Um, but it's not just all of that, it's the fluidity of the drive that impresses with the I-Pace. It's fast, it's comfortable, it's refined, but as I say, it gives you the confidence when you're throwing it down a little, you're one of your favourite A or B roads. It just talks to you and the chassis dynamics are out of this world in terms of everything else. It's a real, real winner in this class as far as I'm concerned. If there is a criticism in the chassis department, I have to say the brakes don't inspire a huge amount of confidence. Obviously you can adjust your brake regeneration system, and that's done through the, the, um, the infotainment screen. But the actual pedal feel, I don't know, maybe it's this car, maybe not. Um, I just feel that it's not quite as sharp um, on the brake pedal. It doesn't give you the same kind of feedback like the Audi and the Mercedes did. Now, normally when I discuss pricing on these cars, I don't usually delve too much into the actual test cars equipment list, but I feel I have to on this one. You see, the Jaguar I-Pace does start at £65,000. This is an HSE model, so this is £75,000. But this particular car we have here is nearly £90,000. Now, that's a lot of money but there are a huge amount of options on the car, nearly 12,000 pounds worth. 22 inch alloy wheels, that's 2,400 pounds, sir. This carbon fiber exterior bodywork, that'll be 3,000 pounds. Head up display, 900 pounds, and so it goes on. So, a word of caution, if you do decide that you are the Jaguar i is for you, just watch your options list before you get too carried away. Direct rivals for the I-Pace are obviously the Audi e-tron and the Mercedes EQC 400 that we featured before. And the I-Pace is bang on their door in terms of price, spec dependent obviously, um, but also power and range potential. But given what I said earlier in terms of the car's unconventional styling for an SUV, you might also be looking at cars that's very tantalizingly close to things like the Tesla Model S, and the new Porsche Taycan 4S. So, here's what we like and what we don't like about the Jaguar I-Pace. We love its design. It's absolutely fresh, it's one of Jaguar's best, and there's no doubt in my mind it is an absolute design classic. Its performance and handling is way above anything else in its class and rivals some sports cars. The ride quality and the driving refinement also stand it above the rest. We don't particularly like the fact it can get very expensive quickly if you choose lots of options. We've also experienced some um, reliability issues with some of the infotainment system and that is something that Jaguar maybe need to concentrate on. And obviously it's not as practical as some of its rivals. So, two years on, does the Jaguar I-Pace still reign supreme as the all-electric SUV of choice? Well, if you look at it from a practical point of view, and maybe you're coming from cars such as the BMW X5, an Audi Q7, or Land Rover Discovery, then you'll find the smaller I-Pace a little bit lacking and almost wanting for something a bit more practical, like so the Audi or the Mercedes. It's not so much a boxy upright SUV that we've been used to and, and almost think of it as like a fast, comfortable five door GT car. And that's where the, that's where the I-Pace really comes into its own. But, and it is a humongous but, if driving enjoyment and actual dynamics is what's important to you, then the I-Pace shows a clean pair of 22-inch alloys to its German rivals. They simply cannot deliver in the same way that the I-Pace does. 
and for my money, that is much more important. It's difficult to express how important the I-PACE is to Jaguar. It is the, one of the company's most defining and memorable cars. In fact, I'm going to be bold here. I would say that there hasn't been a better Jaguar, and there have been some good cars out of Coventry, don't get me wrong, but I think this is the best Jaguar since the E-Type. It really is that good. It's a welcome back to the big cat. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again soon. So, you've watched our video. It's now my job to tell you to like and subscribe, and press the little bell button to receive notification of when our next video is uploaded. Sorry, what's that? You want more than just videos? Okay, did you know that Auto EV is also a website? That's right, autoev.co.uk. Not only is it all the latest news, reviews and musings, including motorsport from the electric vehicle world, but we've got literally hundreds of used electric vehicles for sale from dealers up and down the country. 